previously on G Brusco. Here we are at the top. And of course with the name of Gwalia, which literally means Wales. Um, how can I not go there? Uh, so effectively I would have done the Nullarbor in two days. So welcome to uh, Jeep Roscoe. Uh, this week is going to be a little bit different from usual. I'm going to be talking you through some um, upgrades that I've made um, to the equipment I'll be using over the next leg of the trip. Uh, also a little bit about maintenance for the stuff that I have. Um, but uh, you know, it might not be of interest to everybody, so uh, use the chapter indicators at the bottom to skip through to the different products uh, if you would like to see a little bit more information about the stuff that I'm upgrading to. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, I'll be out um, trying out these new products, um, and then we'll get around to doing a full review as we hit the road again. Uh, but uh, this is now being filmed on my new camera, the Insta360 uh, One X2. Uh, once again, you can use the chapter to skip ahead to uh, look uh, about what this is all about. Uh, but uh, yeah, you, know, you can find out how we do this. <laughs> all right, let's get into it. Just had my uh, delivery from Front Runner. Uh, this is for the next stage of the adventure. I ordered the, uh, the front runner rooftop tent, which hopefully will seamlessly fit on top of my front runner roof rack, slimline two roof rack. Uh, that is. So let's uh, let's uh, have a quick little look what I got here today. So here we are, rather exciting. Uh, very big package. It's uh, it's on a pallet. Um, it looks fairly intact. Uh, front runner tells you not to accept it as it looks damaged, but uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, so this, uh, I'm hoping, uh, will be substantially packaged inside, meaning that uh, the actual tent is a bit smaller than this box. But um, yeah, it looks about right. Um, I'm going to have mine opening off the, the back of the Jeep rather than the side of the Jeep. Um, that's because basically, um, as you can see from this box, it's uh, slightly shorter uh, width-wise than it is length-wise. So it's essentially um, the the width is where it kind of opens out, uh, so it's like a clamshell. Uh, this is the uh, ladder, the extendable ladder that fixes onto one side, which you use then to pull it out. So uh, yeah, let's get it unboxed and uh, and see what's inside. Um, also, this little package here is the expander, front runner expander chairs, uh, which um, should take up substantially less room in the back of Delilah than uh, my traditional camping chair. Uh, essentially, because I'm getting, uh, the, well, I've actually sold the rooftop boxes. Uh, now I'm uh, losing the storage space on the roof uh, because obviously the rooftop tent is going to go there. So, hence the new drawer inside the back of Delilah. And uh, let me see if we can get most of that uh, back in Delilah. The swag there I've still got for the time being, but uh, I will be selling that shortly. Um, I've still got the um, telescopic ladder. 
I may see if I can fix it onto this uh, rooftop tent, but uh, if not, I'll just keep it for the time being because I'm a short ass, so I need all the help to get up to the roof uh, that I can, including, you know, to unpack and set up the tent, so that may still come in handy. Uh, the fridge there, I took the cover off the other day to have a look at the, the wheels. I'm looking at possibility of getting a fridge slide, uh, but that fridge uh, is a bit too wide, so I was looking at taking the wheels off uh, so we can fit on a fridge slide. Uh, next couple of uh, weeks, uh, I'm hoping to get all of this squared away, but for the time being, I need to get this uh, unpacked and move it across slightly so my cousin can get his car in the garage when he comes back. <laughs> from work. Okay, let's get into it. Well, as you can see, I've just opened the um, expanded chairs and thankfully, uh, I was a bit worried, uh, there was a sticker on the front saying uh, mixed goods, so I was hoping that they hadn't forgotten uh, the, the mounts for the roof rack, so I'm glad to say that uh, they are here. Um, front runner uh, gives some really nice uh, literature that goes with this stuff including um, as you'll see uh, okay typically there's not one to be found here but um, they use these little slip in there saying this was packaged by or proudly packaged by and the name of the uh, staff member yeah. anyway as you can see this is the expander chair weighs a little bit more than what I was expecting but I think that's a good thing because you know it shows that uh, there's a bit of quality in there. But look how small it is, you know? And that, as you can see from the picture on the front, expands up to like a director's chair. We'll have a good look at that later. I just wanted to show you these things as we go. today because basically I want to get it uh, the base attached and the ladder attached uh, and fit it straight onto the uh, roof uh, but I'm not gonna do it today because um, my cousin will be coming home from work shortly and he want to park here so uh, it only arrived late this afternoon so tomorrow um, or maybe Sunday when there's uh, plenty of people around to help me we will get to it and uh, really get into it and uh, hopefully get it on top of the uh, on top of the Jeep. I've watched a few uh, videos on YouTube um, on how to, how to fix it etc and it looks relatively easy so uh, I don't anticipate any problems. But, uh, just in case you can't see there, have a look here. So there is my new home for the next few months. Right.
hopefully you might be able to see there that the uh, the brackets, the mountain brackets that come with the front runner roof rack, sit across the two beams. And then um, the runners that I put on the underneath the rooftop tent, there was a little bracket that goes in there which fits into the mount. And there's four of these. Uh, you might be able to see the one on the far side there. Uh, two on the front and another two on the back. So essentially, to put it on, the footage didn't come out very well, so I can't use it. Uh, to put it on, we left the mountain brackets loose so they could run up and down the channels. Until we were happy with the positioning, I was happy with the positioning, and then tightened it all up. A little bit difficult to get your hands in under there, but uh, it wasn't too too bad. And uh, you'll see, as I got it sitting on the roof, it's not completely square. It's sitting slightly to the left because I've got to keep a little bit of space for the max track mounts. So it's just ever so slightly uh, off center to the left. Okay, so uh, I've been promising for a while that I was going to get a new uh, phone holder. Uh, hopefully it will help with the vibrations in the car and whatnot. So I was umming and ahhing between the, the RAM mount and the quad lock. Um, after doing quite a bit of research, um, watching videos, reading reviews, etc. The quad lock edged it uh, just because basically uh, holds it steadier, more reliable um, and less invasive because the the ram mount kind of goes around the phone um, can kind of cut across the the cameras but uh, so I ordered off uh, quad lock which is all of these bits <clears throat> now this wasn't without drama <laughs> I, I phoned quad lock to discuss uh, options of what I what I needed and um, I was assured that the the case for the Galaxy S10 would fit my phone, the Galaxy S10 5G. It uh, it does not. I phoned up uh, Quadlock today um, to say I've, I've received this, and even though you assured me this would fit, it doesn't. Um, they apologised. Uh, they don't actually make a case for the um, S10 5G, and I should send it all back for a refund. So. That was pretty useless. Thanks, Quadlock. Um, however, I went into uh, Bunbury in a town centre today, and I found a shop that actually sells Quadlocks, and they suggested I get a universal adapter. You just simply rub it down with uh, rubbing alcohol to clean the surface on the back of your phone case, and then you stick it down with uh, 3M very high bonding uh, adhesive tape. Now. It's set for a little bit, it doesn't reach total hardness until 24 hours, but that's been about an hour now, and um, you know it's setting nicely. So anyway, I'll talk you through the bits and bobs because it's not, not clear cut when it comes out. So first of all, we've got the universal adapter, which was incidentally uh, $25 in the local shop. And um, as I said, you just clean the surface, stick it on. Let it let it um, dry if you can to totally bond for about 24 hours. So we'll set that aside for the time being. Now these are the other bits and bobs that uh, come with it. Uh, you can change the configuration of the different mounts you want for the different style: you can motorbike, um, boat, 4x4 car, skateboard, etc., etc. So we'll start at the bottom. The bottom I got is the flexible adhesive mount, uh, so it's not for a flat surface, but you can use it for a flat surface. Uh, essentially, comes like this: a sticky, same 3M tape that uh, they use on the universal adapter, but this is flexible. You can see it flex. So if you're st sticking it onto a rounded uh, dashboard, for example, you can you can use this. Now this comes. Uh, there's a series of teeth. 
around here and this comes with like an extender which you can just slit, simply slot in and it fits into those teeth, into those grooves. And you can see it comes with uh, two different size screws. Now when, when I first looked at this I, I went well I can't pass them up underneath so they've got to go in and I'll come back to them. So that's the flexible base. Sitting on top of that I've got the dual pivot arm uh, which has got the same ending. Uh, the teeth sit out on this end and they're recessed in on this end. So for example if that was to sit on there it would sit into the teeth nicely. That way around it wouldn't because they're not recessed. So I wondered well how then do I screw it on? Um, I did a little bit of research on YouTube of how to install these things and essentially um, you have to loosen so it comes with um, with just this little <coughs> this little pin for a more streamlined look to tighten the brackets on this but it also comes with a replaceable um, t-bar which that's what I'm going to use so essentially uh, what you do is you bend the the ball head all the way around and then you can see there's an access point so I'm using the larger of the two screws. You just simply pop that through and then sit it down. It comes with its own Allen key, so you can simply screw that in. Oh, I've forgotten, forgotten the extender. So the extender just sits on that and then this sits on top of that. I've chosen the extender because where my is going to be sitting on the Jeep is going to be recessed in slightly so I need the extra elevation. Uh, not to see the screen of the camera, uh, of the phone, but to use the camera for recording uh, looking out of the window. So there we are, that's, uh, that's fixed in there now, I'll just make sure it's tight. And now you can loosen that back up. So that's essentially the the base of it. Now that's the head that goes onto the back of the of the, of the car phone. Uh, you could put that straight on, but I invested in a vibration dampener just to give me extra little bit of stability there. It's essentially just uh, two mounts that sit on top of each other, and they got these little shock absorbers on it. Uh, this has got a screw that's actually built into it. It's just sitting inside the two. So you just sit that uh, on the cogs, on the teeth again. Uh, that's not in there. I think basically I've got to screw it on. We'll, we'll see here. The Allen key just goes in through the hole at the bottom to get to the screw. There we are. And you might be able to see there that it's now sitting flush. Okay. So then on top of that then you place the, the actual lever head. Uh, this itself is, is grooved and that's to get the phone in and out. So sitting this, so it's flush in the teeth, same as before, you then screw it in. And essentially that's it. Um, you use the, the key here to loosen both of the ball heads so you can have the configuration you want and then you just simply tie it up and when it's tight you've got a fair bit of uh, firm hold there um, as for the back of the phone the back of the phone simply slots into these four into the phone here 
you can push this down to help or you can just push the phone in um, and you can do it uh, you know e either portrait or landscape mode and there we are it's locked in uh, obviously you, you rather than just taking it out and uh, reinserting it into landscape or portrait uh, you could always just loosen off this central bit and turn it to how you like it and then tighten this up so we'll uh, we'll give it uh, 24 hours and uh, and then I'll do a little bit of a review of it actually mounted in the car um, and then we'll test it out over the next couple of days when I go on a little bit of a trip but uh, that's essentially the quad lock mount uh, the hiccup aside with the customer service, um, it looks half decent, but um, stand by for a full review. We shall see. Uh, to get the phone out, you just pull down on this lever and then rotate your phone until it pops out of the lock. There we go. All right. So there's the uh, the quick kind of unboxing and look at it. Uh, hopefully this is going to stick down adequately um, as is this one, but um, only time will tell. Fingers crossed, squad lock. My apologies to Ram. I've been doing a few upgrades and whatnot. Uh, one of those is the hardware I use for editing my videos and uh, photography. So for years and years I've been using the Air. I bought in the US in 2016. It's made in 2015. And um, you know it, it, it's been brilliant but um, I have to be honest it's on its last legs. Uh, I upgraded my camera a few years ago to the uh, Nikon D850 and uh, ever since my photographs have leapt from averaging 14 megabytes to averaging uh, 34 and upwards megabytes so the laptop's really struggling and as a result um, I haven't been able to do as much uh, video ed um, photo editing really. Uh, video editing it's episode by episode so I have to um, edit an episode and then uh, export it, upload it to Facebook, uh, YouTube and then delete it, <laughs> which obviously is not brilliant. I've got external uh, hard drives, so I back things up on there where I can, but you know, it's, it's just not ideal. So, um, big couple of kind of um, improvements, upgrades, whatever you want to call them from uh, Apple uh, late last year. One of them being the M1 uh, MacBook Pro. So uh, I've gone today and I've, uh, I've bought one. I did have the top spec one on order from uh, Apple. I ordered back in November uh, it's now uh, February start of February it was supposed to arrive tomorrow um, Apple have uh, pushed the delivery date back and back and back it is now not due until end of March beginning of April so I cancelled that order uh, did a bit more research it turns out you don't really need the M1 Max processor you don't need more than one terabyte SSD you don't really need more than 16 um, gigs of RAM so We'll see whether or not these, uh, what I've been able to glean from YouTube reviews are true. Um, and let's have a look at what I got. Okay, so I just went down to JB Hi-Fi and uh, I got the highest spec 14 inch that they got. And uh, here it is. All shiny and new. So there we go. I've got the uh, 16 gigabytes uh, of RAM, one terabyte of SSD. Um, you can see in the small print there's uh, 10 core, uh, 16 core GPU. Uh, it's a 14 inch. I think everything else comes as standard then. But uh, yeah, very excited to get this uh, open and set up. So bit of an upgrade and hopefully this will help my video edits and in particular my, my photo edits because my end game out of all of this is become a professional photographer if not a YouTuber 
and um, this is an investment. Uh, so the original full spec kind of one uh, I ordered was almost six grand Australian dollars, um, which you know, I found it very hard to justify. This one was uh, three thousand seven hundred, which is still you know pretty steep. Um, it was two thousand nine hundred ninety nine for the uh, five hundred gigs rather than the one terabyte of SSD, but I decided to go for this one. So only time will tell, but you know this is um, uh, on average a five to six year investment, so hopefully that'll pay off, and I won't need to have any major kind of issues with this or take it back or anything like that. So that's uh, I'll update you as I go. Uh, one of the things I've been meaning to do is a bit of maintenance on the fridge slash freezer. So the uh, brass monkeys freezer. I've taken the cages out and cleaned those individually. Taking the uh, the uh, produce I got uh, obviously out, and then uh, just with some uh, warm soapy soapy water, I've just cleaned the inside. Uh, you can see like you know little little stains pick up from packaging. Uh, these things just don't come out. Um, it's amazing the the little bits uh, stains that do pick up on the white fridges. That's just where packaging has been rubbing against the sides and has stained it. Um, as you can see, the Spress Monkeys, I've taken the bung out. Um, first of all, I took it out of the cover because I didn't think uh, it would get the cover wet. Uh, but there's a hole cut in the cover just underneath. So no need to take it out of the cover. One of the good things about the Brass Monkey is you can take the door completely off. Um, ah. So, you know, you can slot it in that side to open that way and just pop it out and do it the other side. Uh, or you can just take it out completely. That you have done. Soapy water, cleaned it, taken the chop mode off, cleaned that individually. And now I'll just, you know, dry it a little bit, wash out the bubbly water and then uh, put it in the sun to dry. I t took the battery out just as a precaution and turned it off completely. And now for the next couple of weeks it'll remain empty and turned off just to dry it out completely. So one of the other um, investments I've made uh, along this trip is to get uh, some more filming uh, hardware. Uh, I was thinking about simply upgrading my GoPro because the one I'm using is a is a GoPro Hero 4 which I think I bought in 2002 <laughs> or something stupid um, and the GoPro 10 has just come out um, vibration control on it's supposed to be immense um, and whilst I was in uh, JB Hi-Fi which is a electronic store here uh, the guy said to me well have you ever considered a 360 camera my 360 cameras used to be a bit rubbish but uh, made me look up the Insta360 and uh, well, cut a long story short I've got it so I went for the uh, the Insta360 uh, 1x2 which is this size uh, as you might be able to see it's got two lenses here which are uh, 180 lenses on each side uh, so essentially when you record it records everything uh, all, all the way around that way, all the way around that way, and all the other axes you can think of. Um, I also bought the invisible selfie stick that comes with it. Simply, um, it's got the, I think it's three quarters uh, screw on the bottom, which all photography gear has. Simply screws into the bottom, and uh, then it extends through friction, holds it in place. It goes up to, I think it's a meter and a half, but uh, for this video I'll just open it a little bit. Now when I hold this, as I said it records in 360 degrees but the uh, selfie stick itself is invisible because these cameras overlap slightly. So all around here uh, is called a stitch line. Uh, this selfie stick falls within that stitch line underneath so the cameras overlap and they edit out the selfie stick so it makes it look like there's a, a 
a camera floating in midair, basically, which allows you to use uh, a lot of other tricks um, to make it look like you've been followed by a drone, for example, or whatever you can you can you can make that happen. Now, um, the sound on this uh, records quite well close up when there's no external factors, uh, but uh, if you want to do it further away or if there's a bit of wind, uh, you're screwed. So I've also invested in, um, as you can see, I'm using the, the Rode Wireless 2 uh, mic here with my, my camera. Um, since I've already got these, um, I had a little bit of research into accessories for the One X2 and uh, got myself a coal shoe uh, to fit the uh, the Rode Wireless 2 onto, which simply um, screws underneath there, goes into the stitch line, and then you clip the uh, the base of the the one X uh, the uh, the Rode Wireless 2 onto here, and then as long as the wire stays within the stitch line, uh, it kind of goes into here. You've got a little adapter. Here, you take out this cover, which is where you charge it, uh, plug it in there, and then you, you plug the, the middle thing into there. So essentially, um, as long as it's within the stitch line, i.e. the wire doesn't come out this way or that way, as long as it's within this body of the stitch line, it too will be invisible, um, but it will allow me to film from, you know, up to 200 meters away, so that'll be good. Now. One of the reasons I went for the 360 is it's a bit of a um, record now, think about it later, uh, meaning that I can just switch it on wherever and not worry about pointing it at something because uh, you can scroll around afterwards uh, in the footage and just decide what you want to focus on, uh, which would be good. Uh, another thing, for example, is I could put it on the tripod the camera's on now, set it on at the end of a trail, uh, set it to record and simply drive past in the Jeep and then um, post um, uh, uh, post shooting in editing I can then focus on the Jeep and follow it as it goes past so it'll be the f it'll be almost like having my own film crew um, a little bit which is the only reason this pipped the um, uh, the GoPro uh, this is uh, Waterproof uh, down to ten meters. I don't expect on this trip to be going under ten, uh, over t uh, deeper than ten meters, so that'll be fine. I've also got these lens guards on, which just stick on, uh, just to help stop scratches, scratches and whatnot, on the lenses itself. Uh, when it's on, you simply hold hold on this button to turn it on. It's the little startup noise and you can see you've got a screen here then uh, which is a live screen and you can actually scroll around in this to see what uh, you, know, well, you can see the camera there for example there we go uh, you can also set it to do time lapses uh, you can if you don't want to do 360 uh, you can just set it to do 180 or even 90 degrees in, in a certain direction uh, which would be good uh, the one downside I can see to this already is that um, the files are going to be uh, rather large so I won't be able to keep the raw files afterwards. I'll have to edit them and then uh, um, dump the raw footage just because essentially it films in uh, 5K and 60 frames per second. So um, the other day I did a little uh, trial run of this. I think the video was about 1 minute 30 and it was roughly 4.5 gigs so you know they're going to be they're going to be quite big so I edited it down exported what I needed uh, deleted it and the, the end version I think was about 400 megabytes so much more manageable uh yeah so there's that um I've also bought a few bits and bob accessories for this such as this magnetic mount, so I can either screw it directly into uh, the One X2 or into the selfie stick itself. I can then stick this to uh, Delilah, uh, even extend it all the way, and um, we can have some interesting, interesting little plays with this. But you should be able to see a lot more Delilah out of this. Um, my fans have been asking to see a lot more of the Jeep, so uh, this is uh, all part and parcel of that. So yeah, that's the um, 
the Insta360 One X2. Uh, so far, I've been very impressed with it. Uh, as you'll see uh, in the next video when I go up to Perth, I used it for the first time basically to see the uh, the drone show. Comes in this little sleeve to help uh, help protect it, but uh, yeah, so far so good. next week on Jeep Roscoe. Uh, g'day, I'm uh, Fred the Flagman.